I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today's Gospel reading is from Jesus' High Priestly Prayer in John chapter 17. Jesus offers this prayer at the conclusion of the so-called final discourses of John's Gospel, that is, his words to his followers in chapters 13 through 16. Prior to the high priestly prayer, Jesus has been talking to his followers, teaching them still, telling them about what lies ahead at Gethsemane, in Jerusalem, at Golgotha, emphasizing the relationship they and he share with and in one another, and with and in the Father. As we heard over the last two Sundays when Jesus spoke of himself as the true vine, spoke of them as the branches, spoke of the Father as the vine grower. As we begin chapter 17, Jesus looks up to heaven and begins praying to the Father. But it should be noted he's not only addressing the Father, it's pretty clear the disciples are still understood as addressees. In many ways, Jesus' high priestly prayer is his last will and testament for his followers. It says how he feels about them and what he wants for them. Jesus asks God to protect them and keep them safe. It is his high priestly prayer that Jesus says, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. He repeats that a couple of verses later. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. What does he mean by saying that they do not belong to the world? Sometimes I'll see something happen or someone do something shocking, outrageous, and I'll think to myself, do I live on another planet? Have you ever asked yourself that? Is that what Jesus means when he says, they do not belong to this world? To answer this question, we have to determine what the writer of John's Gospel means when he speaks of the world. He uses this word more than all the other Gospels combined, 81 times. In Greek, the word we translate as the world is cosmos. Greek thought and philosophy are influencing the way this word is used in John's Gospel, and John creates some real challenges, especially when he's rendered into English. The word world is sometimes used pretty simply about the planet we live on and its environs. Sometimes world refers to the civilization or world comprised by humankind, as in Romans 1.8 when Paul writes, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is proclaimed throughout the world, throughout the cosmos. The world can also take on a deeper, more theologically loaded meaning, referring to that which has been created by God. It is the object of God's attention and love, and of God's saving acts. God so loved the world that he sent his only Son, so that all who believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Of course, that's John 3.16. But John also uses the term to refer to a world apart from Christ. As the HarperCollins Bible Dictionary notes, a world under judgment, hating Jesus' followers who, paradoxically, have been separated from the world and are not of the world. This sounds contradictory and creates a clear opposition between God, Christ, and the disciples on the one hand and the world on the other. What do we do with this? As HarperCollins observes, disciples are urged to have nothing to do with the world, especially not to love it. But they also note, at the same time, Jesus has explicitly not prayed for the disciples to be taken out of the world. Even in the fourth gospel, the world continues to be God's in creation and salvation. That's important for us to remember. After all, it's part of accepted, dare I say, orthodox belief that the world God created is good and is intended for our enjoyment and our care, not for us to reject and destroy. And it is this world that is the object of God's attention, love, and saving action in Christ again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. In fact, John goes on to say, Indeed, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. God loved the world. God loves the world. As an expression of God's love for the world, God gives life, life as gift. That's what Christ and the Easter message are about. To be sure, the world is not perfect. 
Sin enters in. The world is broken, marred by sin, great sin. That's a part of the Easter story, too. Think about Calvary. Think about Golgotha. It is this brokenness, the ugly stain of sin in and of the world that is to be rejected, repaired, and reconciled to God. But the world itself, life itself, is not to be rejected. In fact, we are to find fuller life, fuller love in this world through Jesus Christ. As Christians, we're called to love and serve the world, not to hate it, just as Jesus loved, loved and served the world and did not hate it. Yes, the world presents us with many challenges. It is not difficult to see why the author of the fourth gospel has Jesus say and pray what he says and prays about the world in today's gospel reading. Like our world, the world of the fourth gospel was too often violent and ugly. Like our world, the world of the fourth gospel experienced war and hatred. Like our world, the world of the fourth gospel experienced duplicity and betrayal in relationships factions and disunity in politics in the church among family and friends like our world the world of the fourth gospel experienced natural disasters pandemics clearly the world can be often is disconcerting unsettling place and state of existence our hearts are broken once again by the violence between israelis and palestinians will it never end young children being killed and crossed off as collateral damage. Our hearts are broken by the violence between the government and demonstrators in Colombia. And needless to say, our own country is marred by significant ongoing hatred and violence in language and action of citizen against citizen. Yes, the world needs ongoing redemption and saving, but our world today doesn't need our blanket rejection. It demands our persistent love. We can surely struggle with the many important issues and questions that confront us, argue and debate about them, but we must stop the hatred and anger. These are contrary to the gospel of Jesus Christ, who came so that the world might be saved. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world, Jesus prays in his high priestly prayer. Yes, it's about life. It's about light. It's about love. Our calling as Christians, as church, is to live into holiness, into oneness with God in Christ. Our calling as Christians is to be the body of Christ in and for the world, to honor and respect this world in which we live as a gracious gift of God. It is to be the focus of our love and our mission, not for its own sake, but for God's sake, who made it, who made us who loves the creation and us as part of that creation. God, who called it all good and wants it, yearns for it to be good, who wants us to be good as God is good and to be holy as God is holy.